Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Today is a little bittersweet as we bid a bon voyage to a longtime friend and guest to our program. Janie Cohen, the director of the University of Vermont's Fleming Museum, is retiring after 31 years at one of the premier places for art and culture in the Green Mountains. Over the course of three decades, first as a curator and then as director, Cohen has seen the role of museums change from repositories of status and privilege to a community that's becoming more diverse and strives to be welcoming and open to all. Janie joins me over Zoom. And Janie, I wanna thank you for taking the time and congratulations on your retirement. Thank you so much. So where and how did your passion for art begin? Um, it began pretty young and I actually, um, I, when I was a little child, I would collect um, small treasures on the street. When I walked, I would always look down and I started curating when I was about seven. <laughs> um, but um, I, you know, it became more formal in college, actually. I majored in art history and then carried it through to graduate school. Awesome. And uh, I, I hope we'll learn what's next for you. But first, I want to ask you to reflect on how an academic museum like the Fleming informs the community beyond the walls of the academy. Um, yes, we, the museum, the Fleming Museum, it differs from a lot of other university museums in that when it was founded in 1931, it was intended to serve the community as much as the, as the academic community. Mm -hmm. So um, from the very beginning, we have always seen our mission and our mandate as serving both. So, you know, what that means is to kind of balance out scholarly exhibitions and more popular exhibitions. Um, you know, to, to really keep an eye and and frequently those audiences don't differ so much. But, um, you know, in terms of, of, you know, a year long exhibition program, we really make an effort to not only um, speak to the university campus, but to the broader, not just Burlington either, but the broader Vermont community. And, and you certainly have, and I see you going like this, like ba that balance yeah. um, always. And you know, you've re received accolades and gotten a lot of really great press over the years for, for many shows and innovations there. How do you view your impact on the Fleming over your tenure? Um, I really think it, 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 ha it took place in different areas. And you know, for a museum director, the, the most important to us has to be financial. <laughs> um, and I am grateful that, you know, and I, I did nothing all alone. Everything was, you know, was done with the help and the, the involvement of a lot of people, but we were able to, um, to raise endowments and, and generous bequests, gifts that really stabilized the Fleming into the future. Um, and then exhibitions, as you mentioned, you know, we were able to put the museum on the map internationally, as well as celebrate Vermont artists, um, you know, but again, a balancing act, both of those things are equally important. Um, collections, we really um, had a had a focus, I had a focus on bringing them into the contemporary world and time because they were very, very strong up until about the 1970s when I arrived. And so a lot of what we have acquired is artwork that was made since the 70s. Um, and then lastly, and we'll talk about it more, just reckoning with our past, with the Fleming's past. Yes, and, and you've done that so well. But you know, museum directors and exhibition curators, of which you have been both, are arbiters of taste, of what's in, what's out, um, what do we need to show? How does this sort of gatekeeping translate at a time when museums attempt to be more open and inclusive? This is such a great question. Um, in the past, it really was the curator's choice and the director's choice together. Um, and, you know, we, it, it sometimes over the years, it was what interests the curator or, you know, here's an excellent show that we think the community will be interested in. Now we and, and a lot of other museums are really looking to the community to play an active role in, in a lot of the things that we do. So rather than either kind of imposing staff interests on the community or guessing at it, you know, what the goal is, is to include, include community in decision making about exhibitions and programming, et cetera. Right, and, and certainly in the last few years, the Fleming has been very introspective and endeavored to be more transparent 
about the history of its collections and yeah. um, how to make them and the Fleming in general more meaningful for all audiences. So talk about Fleming Reimagined and how this effort will inform the museum going forward after you. Sure. So um, what we did, and again, it's not just the Fleming, it's a lot of museums, is, is looking hard at our past. And um, we and a lot of other museums whose collections were formed when ours were. So it was really 19, 19th into the first half of the 20th century. Um, they were really, the collections were viewed and acquired through the lens of colonialism, through the lens of racism even, or I should say really white-centered mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. um, and even through the lens of eugenics. And I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of our viewers here um, will remember that the first director of the Fleming was the founder of the Eugenics Survey of Vermont. Mm -hmm. So what that does is it really forms a structure um, in which these are, you know, the, the way the collection was assembled and the way it was still viewed um, and, you know, exhibited is very, very much based through that lens. So what we're doing now and what we hope will, will continue into the future um, is, is to look at that hard to increase the diversity of the collections, you know, as you said, to make the museum a very comfortable place for everyone, not just for people who are used to going to museums and grew up going to museums. I mean, even the Marble Court, which is beautiful, um, you, it's not always the most comfortable place to be. Mm. So, um, you know, I think looking into the future, um, this is also a, it's a goal of the university. It really is. Um, you know, equity, diversity, and inclusion is a, is a major goal of UVM. And, mm. um, you know, the way that the museum does it may change, but it will continue to be a, a very important goal. Well, as, as part of that, you've actually rotated several paintings off a view out of the galleries that are deemed culturally yes. inappropriate or uh, downright offensive. Do they go back into storage? What happens they, to those pieces? So they, yes, they go back into storage. And, you know, we are constantly moving things in and out of storage, um, always. And um, with some of those, and with everything in our collection, they're used constantly. So we have, um, not just classes, I mean, a lot of classes, faculty and students, you know, and some of those pieces that we took down, you know, were formed the, the you know, the basis of very intense discussion for them. Um, but not just that, others, others come in and see the collection. We have a, an exhibition coming up this fall, a really exciting exhibition um, of the, the Howard Center arts um, collective. And so they have requested to see works and they're working from those uh, art objects and making their own. So the collections, and that's, you know, one of my, um, really one of, one of the things that has been most close to my heart is making our collection usable and meaningful to the, to the largest possible um, communities. Right. Seriously, rather than, um, you know, than having them be problematic to to really treat them in a way. So some of the more difficult works are really helpful when they are the center of a conversation rather than just hanging on the wall so that when you walk in and don't immediately have a context, you, you could say, oh, that that's makes me very uncomfortable. But if it you know, if it's part of a dialogue, part of a part of a um, a meaningful conversation, and, it's you know, it's received differently. And and, and and perfect in an educational institution to really talk right, about right, these things. Exactly. Um, yeah. So um, the Fleming Museum is, of course, a Vermont museum. Uh, yes. So how have you worked to champion and or reflect Vermont and Vermont artists? So um, collecting Vermont artists is, is a mission. It has always been and, and exhibiting them. So over the years, we have had a lot of, um, and I think this was really the most valuable one person exhibitions of Vermont artists. Um, and not just, you know, not just contemporary like um, Alison Bechdel and Barbara Zucker, Kathleen Schneider, mm -hmm. Ed Corrin, um, you know, just a few that come to mind. But um, 
but Hilda Belcher, you know, for instance, who was a 19th and early 20th century Vermont artist um, who was known, you know, known nationally um, and many others over the years. And that also will continue to be an important part of our mission. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I love when you take out, you know, what do we have and what can we show here? Um, so. Finally, Across the Fence has covered many of the exhibitions at the Fleming during your time as director, but one is certainly near and dear, um, uh, the exhibition on Picasso. You are a Picasso scholar. Um, is this part of what you might do in your retirement or is something else in the works? Um, I have, I've been thinking again, I, I miss writing about art and as museum director, you know, most of, most of the writing is administrative or grants or, um, you know, not really focusing on the art. So I am very excited about writing about art again, whether it's Picasso or, you know, or other artists, um, or local artists. Um, so I, you know, I'm going to give myself some time. There are some immediate projects that are, that are underway that I'm very excited about, but I think I'm not going to be able to stay away either from, you know, watching and maybe even writing about the evolution of museums in the 21st century, mm. as well as as individual artists. So you'll be around maybe to consult with UVM. You're not going to be that that far away, but really uh, focused on kind of away. different things that that yeah. are important to you. Absolutely. Janie Cohen, thank you so much for being with us today and um, being at the helm of this wonderful institution, the Fleming Museum, uh, for so long. And we send you all the best as you move on from UVM. Thank you, Fran. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.